Hey tribe of journeymen and women. So about an hour ago, I just recorded outside a video about why yoga sucks, or to be more precise, how I trained and taught yoga for about a decade. And I realized I was teaching the wrong stuff like most of yoga instructors. Uh, so it's a long story, which, you know, that's the episode for it on its own. But uh, I came back home uh, to my parents' place. I'm just visiting right now. And me, my girlfriend and my mom, we started just discussing about, they asked me, so what was the video about? And he told about, you know, the whole false source of knowledge in yoga. And uh, that naturally led to the discussion of uh, spirituality and religious teachers in general. And while I spoke to you already a bit about my experience of the bad things I picked up from my spiritual teacher, uh, and then that I taught in a wrong way, there's a lot of aspects which I didn't actually uncover as I spoke, uh, and mostly about generally the, the, the whole culture of spiritual teachers or spiritual gurus. It applies to religion too, but religion was never really my field. I was more into spirituality, just like a really devoted student. I met a lot of spiritual teachers, read a lot of their books. You know, I lived in a spiritual school for a few years, uh, and uh, out of it all, I, you could also say I pretty much was a, pretty much as much as I hate to admit it, I pretty much was a spiritual teacher myself. Uh, when I was running my Aikido school, which is a philosophical martial art. It's it's a martial art which actually is based on spirituality a lot, like a religiousness too. The founder, he was a heavily spiritual, religious guy, and and for him, the two were inseparable. You know, his his martial art and his spiritual religious philosophy. So so I had to go and learn that as well, but also too when I was living in the Martial arts school, uh, it was a spiritual school, so we talked a lot about everything, you know, uh, Tibetan Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, Advaita Vedanta was a big thing, the non-dualistic teachings, it's just like kind of everything, and I was very devoted, so I read everything I could on my own. So naturally, because I always wanted to uh, create positive impact on people's lives, when I opened my own school, I was expected to be kind of a spiritual uh, teacher by my uh, own spiritual teacher. And uh, I kind of was, you know, that was my intention. I thought that that's the best way to help people is, you know, to be a spiritual guide for them, to, to show an example and to, you know, share my wisdom and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You might know that I started doing that when I was 22, which is young, but people were impressed. They liked what I was saying. They were really loyal to me and, and devoted. And th that's a whole story of, you know, how eventually they abandoned me because I started questioning that myself. But what I really won't want to focus on is the fact, again, that not only was I a spiritual teacher and I, I got to experience what it means to be one and I started seeing, holy crap, there's so much bad stuff there, and which I didn't realize until I really dug into it. And also, too, some things I realized when I left the whole spirituality path and I look back uh, with my critical thinking now, I'm like, oh crap, there was some pretty heavy nonsense is there. But also too, as I mentioned, I spent quite some time with spiritual teachers that I met, you know, because I was kind of part of the game. So I would constantly be approached by spiritual teachers myself, meet them in some, you know, spiritual seminars, whatever. So, so I got my share of spirituality. And the thing is, there's again, a lot of bad stuff there. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. So let's have a sip of coffee. And let's start the subject. So I, I dare say that the biggest criticism I have to spiritual teachers, and that includes reflecting about my own experience, but also looking at the spiritual teachers that I met and dissecting what they did and what they're doing. The biggest problem is that there's a strong belief in them usually that they know what they're talking about. But the issue is usually they don't. Uh, I, I noticed that generally there's a tendency that, in, it, I think it's in general that spiritual people and spiritual gurus as well, it's a whole culture which doesn't emphasize critical thinking. It's kind of even looked down upon. You know, it's, it's usually a lot of times, you know, sometimes it's better, sometimes it's worse, uh, but there is a general tendency in spirituality to be like, there's us and them. You know, it's presented in a very subtle way so you would feel like, like, you know, oh, it's, it's, it's all peaceful and harmony and chi and blah, blah, blah. But actually, you know, it's quite arrogant when you think about it. 
And even recently, uh, about half a year ago, I went to a spiritual seminar. I didn't know it's a spiritual seminar. I had enough of them. I didn't really want to go, but but I thought it's something. Gonna, it's going to be something else. And I, but I came in. I realized, holy crap, I've been here. You know, I've been in stuff like that. I was like, okay, well, you know what? I'll see how I respond after going out of it for years. I'll see how I respond to it. And there was a young lady teaching the seminar. A very typical spiritual person you know like and the typical the reason I'm seeing that is because she was soft-spoken and she would move you know in kind of gentle ways and the thing is why I really catch that very well is because I was that guy you know I was never like well I guess I, I can't really say I was never really it kind of was going into that direction I, I like to say that I was never as bad but I was never like completely in it. I was always a bit skeptical myself. I was always a bit cautious. But to be fair, also, I was that guy. So I know exactly, you know, when I see something, I'm like, I've been there. I know what's happening. And the thing is, I've been that soft-spoken guy as well. If you watch some of my former videos, I was that, you know, calm and well-maintained and slow-talking and gentle voice. And the thing is, I tell you right now, that's an act. That's an act, and the worst thing is the act is, is, is done without even the person understanding that. I can tell you because I've been there. It's not like you're, huh, I need to pretend to be a spiritual teacher, so I'll pretend to be a spiritual teacher. It's not like that. Usually, maybe in some cases, but usually what really happens is you, that you live in that world, you live in that environment, and that's kind of natural. You, know, you, you tend to pick up things and imitate things you're around. And most of the spiritual teachers are like that. And when you spend time in that culture and you aim for being a spiritual teacher yourself, subconsciously you kind of start to think that that's the way you should be yourself, that that's the way you should function. And so you head into you know, that path and you become the spiritual teacher and naturally you start to speak the same way, and you start to move the same way and you start to use certain words and avoid other words. It's like somebody says control and you're like, Oh no, we don't say control here. Control is too blah, 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 blah. That was like, that was legit actually. That was part of the culture I was part of, like part of the community. Like control, you would avoid the word control. And that's so fucked up. The thing is because you're limited and, and you, you think that you're, you know, it's spirituality, it's funny because spirituality, it's usually it's all about you being authentic, right? It's all about you being the best version of yourself, but actually, you're not fucking being your best self. You're being a, a dummy. You're being a copy of other spiritual teachers. There's like so little authenticity there. And again, I, I like to protect myself a little bit, go a little bit to kind of, I feel, yeah, I feel some comfort in, in the knowledge that, you know, I always try to maintain a balance between the two, but, but also to recognize, yeah, part of me was, it wasn't necessarily fake in a conscious way, but it was fake in an unconscious way. Uh, way. I was imitating what I thought works. And now to slow, to come back for a moment to the story that I started, you know, I went to that spiritual seminar. And I think I'll just actually use that as an example because, you know, that, that, that visit of a few hours, uh, there were so many just very common bad dynamics of spirituality that were there that if you see it there, it's kind of universal, it's everywhere. So part of it was, you know, the teacher was soft-spoken, slow-moving, very gentle, avoiding certain words and blah, 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 you know, making pauses in between words, like all the stuff like you generally see in spiritual teachers. Uh, but the other thing, the, the moment which really pissed me off, because initially I was still like, okay, I'll, I'll be open-minded, you know, I won't be judgmental, and maybe, who knows, maybe it's going to be okay, you know, maybe it's not that bad. And there was this moment. You know, because there were a lot of people and I saw and I recognized that a lot of people weren't sure where, where they came. Like it wasn't their cult, you know, which is, you know, working together and they're all, you know, about doing that. But the thing is, there were a lot of people who had no clue where they got to. Like, uh, I guess the presentation was not very clear and I could see in their eyes, they're like, holy crap, where, where did I get to, you know? And, uh, and there was this moment uh, where she said, 
you know, if, if the practice is going to be too much, and to let you know if you're interested what the practice is, it's, it was a lot of spontaneous movement, you know, shouting out your emotions, kind of the general spiritual stuff. There's some good stuff in there, but, you know. Anyway, so so she was like, if, if that, it's going to be too, if it's going to be too, um, uh, too much for you, don't worry. You can go to the kitchen and have a tea. And I was like, that's something I used to do and I'm happy I did. I never judged people for not being with me. I was like, you know, I understand this is a bit crazy. This is a bit weird. So if you don't want to do this, don't worry about it. It's fine. It doesn't say anything bad about you. That, that was kind of how I, I was. And I think that was a great quality while even being a spiritual teacher. Usually they're not like that. And for a moment I thought, oh, actually, you know, she's not that bad. She, she, she gives the space. And then she says... You know, she says, like, so if it's too much, go to the kitchen to have, to have tea. And then she says, because some of us are just not ready. You know, not all people are ready for this. You know, it's like, fucking A. I got so frustrated inside. I was just burning. I was like, because you know what? That, that subtly states that that means we're superior. We are better. And that's a big part of the fucking spirituality side, which is bad. It's dark. It's dark, bad juju. And they don't sometimes even get it, or they get it just half consciously. It's a lot, it's a culture, it's a big culture of superiority. It's a big culture of we are better. And it's not spoken directly because they could not admit it because in their terms that would mean that they're full of ego, which they are. The ego is just subtle. It's a spiritual ego, but it's still there. It's even bigger than, than others. And in another video, I you know spoken about one of the biggest Western spiritual teachers who was officially in uh announced as enlightened by one of the famous indian gurus papaji and and i'm talking about andrew cohen and uh, and he was like big big time you know and and eventually his students wrote a book about him how 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 he was a fucking douchebag you know how unfair he was and and he was you know acting bad towards women and a lot of stuff i never read the book i should maybe read the book but but the fact is he was a psycho but you know he was he he would always talk about the ego dissolving, and you know, it's like when you experience enlightenment, the ego dissolves, and it's like, fucking crap, you know, you think your ego dissolved, but then when you have that knowledge, you, you leave an empty space, an empty, unattended space, where your ego thrives, and that's what happened with him, and it's fucked up. Anyway, so, that statement really frustrated me, because it, it shows the sense of superiority, and the idea that the people who don't do this, they're not as good as us. We are ready and they're not ready. It's like, it's, it's, it's bad. It's separatist and it, there's so many bad things. I hope you just naturally realize what it is. I don't want to make the video all about that, but, but it, it was dark and I didn't like that already. <sighs> anyway, so, so yeah, the moments like that and then also to that, that kind of, you know, that image of being a spiritual teacher, like soft-spoken and etc., which I keep mentioning. Uh, the thing is, because I've been there, I've been that guy, I know that that's not them. It's like, it's, it's almost impossible that that was their natural expression. And, and I perceived, because again, I recognized what was in me in the past. I would, like, I would look at that young woman who was the spiritual teacher there, and I could see that somewhere beneath that, there's a different person. There's stuff that she will not talk about, there's stuff which she will not address, address in front of these people because she's taking on the role of a spiritual teacher, but it doesn't mean she doesn't have that. I'm sure that there are parts of her that she wouldn't want others to see. And it's a different video that I made, I spoke all about that. That's what I did as well. I, I ignored some of the parts of myself, I didn't acknowledge them, and later I realized, damn, you know, I'm not really being myself with these people. So I could see that with her too, and with any spiritual teacher that I meet, that, you know, it's a facade, and it's not healthy, because first of all, and I don't want to. I don't want to talk about this too much because, uh, because I already have made a whole video about that. Like, click here on the corner if you want to see about that. But just a quick mentioning, quick note, is it's unhealthy because the people who look at you as that spiritual teacher, they start to think that that's that's superior, that that's the go-to, that that's the best possible version of a human being, and they try to replicate and imitate that as well. They take you as an example, and I think that's spirituality, and and they try to you know grow into it, and they start to repeat those sentences. They start to speak like the teacher. They start to act like the teacher, thinking that that's that makes you somehow better. It doesn't. It's a fake construct. Being fake was never good. 
unless in certain cases, unless you're a spy in some country, you know, and then you need to pretend. But that's, you know, extreme case. But otherwise, you know, that's not the path to become better. And and interestingly enough, like that whole dilemma beforehand, when I started questioning my spirituality and when I started to realize that me being the typical spiritual teacher is not really working for people, it's doing more harm than good, I... Um, I started to, oh crap, I lost my thought. Ah, anyway, okay. Let's make sure the video is valuable and I'll just I'll just come back to something valuable. So, um, so yeah, the thing is, the construct is not real. And uh, I met other, other spiritual teachers as well who were exactly like that. I could see that they're imitating something, giving the bad impression to people. Uh, people are trying to be like them. But yeah, actually I remember the thought. And uh, um, I personally, when I started to question my spirituality and, and realizing, I repeat myself, uh, that it's doing more harm than good to, to my students, uh, I, holy crap, what's happening with me? Every time I get to that point, I lose my thought and I'm wasting your time now. This is a no-go for me. <sighs> what, what did I want to say? Oh, it's so good. Oh, I, and this is a one-take video. Oh, man. Uh, okay, well, I repeat, please bear with me. Just, just skip, you know, on YouTube, if you press the button to the right, it skips 10 seconds. Skip to the part where I'll be talking what I need to talk. I'm sorry, my viewers, journeymen and women. Okay, so, oh yeah, finally, thank you. I remember, I, I started asking myself, so what is spirituality? How do you define spirituality? What is spiritual? And I realized it's a, it's a tough, it's a bad situation because... I don't really think spirituality is well-defined at all. And what that leads to is that leads to people um, uh, having different ideas about what spirituality is and trying, they, they all think like they're spiritual, but they have different definitions of spirituality and they can't find a, 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 the, the same meeting point because, or they go to wrong directions, unhealthy directions, because their definition of what they're seeking is bad. And so I asked myself, so if people ask me, like, if, if I say that I'm a spiritual person, what does that mean? Have you ever asked that? Did you ever consider? If not, then holy crap, crazy, huh? You're going on a spiritual path and you think, like, you know where you're going, but if you can't even define what that spiritual path is, how can you know that where you're going is good? Or how can you know exactly where and how to walk? How can you know which methods work or not? The whole filtering system is messed up. So... To make sure I avoid this problem, I ask myself, um, how do I define spirituality? And the best answer of the day that I came to was that spirituality is living in order to, living for the whole, living for the greater good. Uh, basically, it's two points. One is identifying yourself as part of the, of the bigger whole, not seeing as yourself as a separate, uh, completely independent entity, which to this day, I don't believe it would be a good thing to believe because we are all connected. It's kind of almost logical. But if you consider yourself to be separate, that that then it's all about me against them. You know, it's all about survival. When you consider yourself a part of the whole, you realize, damn it, you know, we're like, I'm like a cell in the body and I need to make sure that I'm not making the situation worse. I need to make sure I'm making it better. That's one of the reasons why I'm making these videos. I, I trust and I feel that they are you know, putting in value that's that's hopefully going to be good for others. It's not about me, oh, look at me, I'm talking. It's about me giving something valuable to, to, to the world. And so that's, for me, that is spirituality. Recognizing yourself as part of the whole, as part of the bigger construct, uh, which naturally gives responsibility, and, and uh, taking that responsibility on and, and working to do better. But if you take that as spirituality, Suddenly, a lot of what a lot of things what people take spirituality for becomes unnecessary and nonsense. Like chakras, for example, like something like it's, you know it's, I think it's a make-up belief. Like there's no legit proof that I ever came across that chakras exist. But the thing is, spiritual people they usually like get so you know into it and they they it becomes like a, it becomes like a game. It's like oh I need to open this chakra, I need to open this chakra, and that's where they perceive that spirituality is. It's all about knowing what the chakras are. And, and, and showing to everyone, look, my navel chakra is open. My, I can, my third eye is open. I see wavelengths that no one, no one else sees. For me, that's zero spirituality because spirituality, how, how does that help you become a better person and serve better for others? 
how does that positively impact others? And if you are opening your chakras to really become better, to really serve people, then that's great. You know, then, okay, well, hooray to you if that works, but does it? Because again, too many spiritual people that I met, they're focusing on, on creating a better image of themselves. And that has nothing to do with serving others. And the funny thing is, if you want to serve others, if you want to be more valuable to others, soft spokenness, moving like f from butterfly, whatever, it doesn't really, it's not about that. Actually, the best of what I found, and that's what I'm doing my best to, to live, is, is actually sometimes to swear, is actually to, to be, to express your emotions, to not dim them down, to admit when you're, when you're depressed, to admit when you're really having a hard time in your life. You know, that's, and to talk with, about that, to be open about that, not to complain to everyone, not to make your problem to everyone's problem, but, but to be open and say, look, I'm not always perfect. You know, I, I really screwed up with my partner last night. You know, I'm actually in a down mood or I was really, I had a really down mood this weekend. But then the next day you go out there and do something amazing and, and you show it to people that actually you can be flawed and great at the same time. They're not, they're not mutually exclusive. I don't think that's much more spiritual if you want to work, have that word at all. It's about really finding who you are, really being yourself, really owning your shit, really owning your, your, your strengths and weaknesses and being open about them. Not pretending and not, not, to, not pretending like you're someone else, not collecting enlightenments and chakras and sharing, oh, I know about the Bhagavad Gita and you don't. Not that, not us against them. You're, if you're a part of a greater whole, if that's what you recognize, there's no us against them. It's all us. And then everyone literally is, you know, your brother and sister, and, and then you feel compassion. And that's, that's what I consider to be spirituality. It has nothing to do about how you speak, how you dress, or how many chakras you opened. Now, I really want to come back to spiritual teachers because that's officially what the video is about, but I thought I felt this message was really important to share, just in general about spirituality. Well, let's make sure we are on point and we get some spiritual teacher stuff there too. So okay, we, we covered already one thing that, you know, pretending to, pre having the whole image of a spiritual teacher, that's not spirituality, that's fucked up. Um, also to, um, and now kind of the, the name of the video, if I didn't decide to change it, it's, you know, and if YouTube will allow me to use it, it's uh, spiritual teachers don't know shit. If that's not the name, that's what I actually initially intended. Spiritual teachers don't know shit. And the reason, again, why I'm saying that is uh, I've seen, you know, for really spiritual teachers I met, there was one dark, dark, bad, bad thing that I came across and I was I was learning from that and for a while I was teaching that and, and it's it's the worst which I really want to make sure I address in this video. And that is that spiritual teachers they're most of the times teaching stuff they shouldn't be talking about. They're I think I mentioned briefly in the beginning that's that's kind of a a universe a, a common very common quality in spiritual teachers. They're usually very confident which is already a bit of a bad sign. Uh, but not necessarily that confidence is bad, but, but they really believe in what they're saying and they really believe they know. And that's a bad thing because the first step is to know that you don't know. That's why I love Socrates. And I was, it's to realize that actually, like, no matter how, how well some of the things worked out for you, it doesn't naturally mean that it's going to work out for others. And that's a huge sin that many spiritual teachers I notice do, they, something, and there's actually even levels here. Like, let's say something worked for that spiritual teacher, you know, some type of meditation. And then he goes out into the world and starts to teach everyone that specific meditation. And he's like, it works 100%, it's the best. It's like, how do you know that it really works for others, for everyone? Why don't you be a little bit humble and say, it worked for me, but I can't guarantee it's going to work for you. I can guarantee it's going to work for everyone. And I'm talking about meditation now, but it applies to everything. Because that's the bad juju spiritual teachers do. They, they started to talk about relationships. 
although they, they're terrible, some of them are terrible at relationships. One of the spiritual teachers that, that I was in contact with was divorced twice. That person was then, and actually both of his, from what I understand, both of his wives left him, right? Because obviously there was a good reason for that. There must have been. But, and then he got with a partner who, uh, who was 20 years or something younger. Now to a degree, I could say, okay, you know, it's your deal. Okay, it's like, you know, the age difference and, you know, people get divorced. You know, I'm divorced. So it's like, it's like, you know, I get it. You know, I mean, it's, it's your thing. You know, you do you. But shit goes down when you went through that experience. You know, you were twice divorced and you're now spending time with the person who's way under age and you're going out there and telling others, giving advice about marriage, about relationships. What the fuck? I need to pause here for a moment because it's just mind boggling. It's just like, what the fuck? Can, are you with me here? I mean, I, like, if you're listening to me, like, does that make sense to you? Like, how can you do that? How deluded you have to be in order to, to have when, to be terrible at relationships, clearly yourself, the evidence shows, and you're going out there and giving advice to others because, basically just because you're, you're, you're officially a spiritual teacher. And that applies to many subjects, to many fields. You know, and I would understand if that particular spiritual teacher would say, look, you know, I'm not that good at, 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 uh, at relationships. You know, he would give you a disclaimer. You know, he would say to you, I'm not that good and I've been divorced twice. You know, I'm not ideal. But then still like one thing that I discovered that works for me and maybe it's going to work out for you, you know, but I can't promise it's going to work for you. But then, you know, this is what the best of the best that I believe in. Okay, I can let you go with that, you know, per se. But that was not the case. That particular person that, I'm, that I have in my mind, you know, he would come to you and say, like, oh, you know what? You shouldn't do this in a relationship. Or that's a bad thing in a relationship. Or, you know, oh, you should do like that in a relationship. It's like, what the hell? What is this? I'm hoping that the right people are listening to this video and, and maybe they, they've done that themselves and, like, stop for a moment and question yourself, man or woman. Like, that's not a thing you can do. It's terrible. And the thing is, yeah, like well, I got some advice some, some, you know, relationship advice from that person. And, and a lot of it was shit. You know, now, now that I'm, uh, I've been married, I'm divorced. And, you know, I've, uh, I've read a lot of books about relationships. And I'm working my ass off to be a good partner. And now the partnership I have with my girlfriend so far, it's really good. I'm very happy. But I think part of it is because, you know, I worked my ass off for that and still I'm not going out and giving advice to people about marriage or relationships. I'm super careful about that because I realize that relationships in particular, it's such a difficult subject. You know, I, I respect the professionals, you know, who are, who, who put in the work to be relationship experts. And that's the only thing they're living about. Okay. I can go to that person and ask for advice, but even then, you know, I have to be cautious because you know they cannot give all solving solutions because there's none and a good one a good expert would realize that he knows what he doesn't know he knows that it's impossible to know everything but the spiritual teachers they don't act like that they act like they know exactly everything and they go out and i'm sure you met some of them if you've been in the spiritual world they go out there and give you financial advice they give you business advice they give you marital advice they give you health advice. It's like, there's no possible way you're an expert at all those fields. You know, you probably tried out this and that. You dabbled a bit here, dabbled a bit there. And you know how to seem smart. And then you go out, you go around, and then you try to convince everyone that that rules. And the terrible thing is that spiritual teacher, as I mentioned in the beginning, most of them have have a lacking part in understanding uh having critical having critical thinking problems i can it's an interesting thing you know I, 
usually I try to stop at 30 minutes, but I think this is like some valuable shit. So I, I want to make sure that, you know, I'll, I'll just go a bit on a binge and, and trust me, there, there's going to be value in this. So, so if you're you know, watching, I, I think it's going to be worth watching the whole thing, you know, watch it in two times if you want. So, uh, and then I lost my thought like that. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to come back. So, uh, it's impossible to be an expert at everything. Despite that, spiritual teachers oftentimes feel like they are. But that's the thing. And, and you know, even let's come down to, to human being level. Even think, let's think about ourselves. It's not like we're not guilty of that. And it's not like I wasn't guilty of that either in the past. Where even if we're not spiritual teachers, sometimes we go to other people and we start telling them, oh, you should do this or you shouldn't do that. It's like, how the hell do I know that? You know, it's like, why do I think that I know exactly what you need? Well, that's, 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 that's arrogant. That brings back also spiritual teachers. Most of them are arrogant, even as subtly. I actually want to jump to this moment quickly in a moment. But one of the spiritual teachers I met in, in India, it's funny. It's so terrible that it's funny. Uh, I met a few and, and a couple of them in particular were really nice. I really love them. Very humble. Westerners, by the way. Spiritual uh, Indian monks, Westerners. I mean, Indian tradition monks. Uh, but then I met this Indian guy, like, who was a monk in, in the ashram, spiritual uh, monastery that I was living in. And he invited me to take a walk. And now I can tell you so clearly, the walk with him was all about him wanting to feel great about himself. He had that kind of posture and wide language of, I know shit. And, you know, the thing is, I think he wasn't even recognized, you know, as enlightened. He obviously was living there for years and he got that main realization. Again, I speak about that in a different video, you know, enlightenment is not what you think. Check it out if you want. But then, but then he, he had that recognition and then he gave himself permission to, you know, be like, I know stuff. I'm going to tell you. And the whole walk we had, he, he was not interested at all in what I was saying. You know, it was all about him, blah, blah, blah. And then he would ask me questions. Not because he cared about the answers that I said. He asked questions in order to, uh, to boost himself because he knows the answer. And there was one very funny moment in particular about that. He, uh, he asked me a question about... Like, it would take me a few moments to, to recollect the exact question. I'm not going to waste your time. So I'm not going to do that. I'll just kind of give you a general feeling of it. So he was like, you know... Actually, I, can't, I actually even think I remember. So... So he was like, when you paint the painting, you know, and he, again, he's talking about the whole spiritual thing. Uh, and it's like, and you paint the painting and then, and you create something amazing. And then you suddenly look at it and it's like, wow, how did I do that? Where do you think that comes from? And I was like, I, I knew exactly what he's talking about. You know, I already read enough books and, and spent enough time in spirituality, but I was also like 22, I guess. So, so, you know, I guess he, 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 he didn't even, he didn't care at all what I was saying. And I was like, well... You know, it's, uh, it makes, well, it's because, you know, he, the universe was, I was speaking in the spiritual terms, the universe was working through him and, you know, he expressed the universe and then, you know, and then he, because it was, it was not like he could own it. Uh, and, and, and he's like, it's like, oh, no, no, no. And he's like, and then he's like, no, no, you're, it's not that. And he's, he says pretty much exactly the same thing I said. And I'm looking at him, I'm like, I usually am, used to be very polite. And I was like, but Adam, I was like, well, that's exactly what I said. And he's Oh, um, oh, well, yeah, oh, well, well, and then he continues his, his bullcrap later, further, and I was just like, dude, and also, actually, also, too, something I spoke with my mom and, and my girlfriend uh, just before recording this video, which inspired me to sit down and talk with you about the subject, um, when I was in India, again, um, I met some people Westerners who were living there for years, for decades, actually. From what I understand, probably they went there during the hippie years. And uh, they, you know, they were searching enlightenment or whatever that was popular the day. And they eventually stayed there. And uh, quite a few of them that I met were some of the, uh, the... The word that comes to my mind is pathetic, but it's, it's a tough word. It's, it's a dark word. Uh, what I mean is more desperate. There were some, they were some of the most desperate people I've met. Like, on all levels, you could see it. And I'm just like, you know, remembering 
a couple of people very vividly from that trip that I met. And one of them was, they're, they're all, both, you know, older gentlemen, like, and those are separate stories in different places, but they were like, you know, 70, I guess, something like that, 60, 70. And, uh, and they're just confused. You can see that they, they're, they're confused and they're kind of sh they're uncertain about themselves and, and, and they're trying to, they're still seeking for that spiritual truth and kind of discussing about their spiritual subjects. But there's a lack of curiosity in that. Again, it kind of feels like they know the answer, but they don't. It's kind of almost confusing. But but on all levels, you see that, you know, they don't look that good. They're kind of tired, desperate. And 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 yeah, and, and one of the hippies, that, that guy was really like, you can see he's a hippie, like still to today. And, and, you know, he was inviting me. I was, I was hanging out with a bunch of tourists in a particular part of the trip. We were going to Dharamsala, the, the place of Dalai Lama. I was going to a lecture of Dalai Lama there. And uh, we went on the bus and we met him, I think, in the bus station. It was like early morning. And he's like, oh, you know, I have a place. He was telling us about spirituality, blah, blah. And then he, he was like, oh, I actually have a place. You could all, you know, lie down there. And, and my group was kind of excited. They're like, oh, it sounds great. And I could see like, oh, he just wants to boost himself. You know, I, I could already perceive that. And, um, and I didn't want to, you know, just go there and be brainwashed by him, him trying to prove that he knows his stuff. And I wasn't so excited. So I think I started to, to be like, to get the group to towards like, oh, well, you know, at least I'm not hyped about this. Even like you go, I, I won't go. And everyone started to have doubts. And I could clearly see, I actually read body language. That's one of the things I like to do is, you know, I have some knowledge about body language. So, so I, and especially when I lecture, when I, when I do public speeches, I, I read body language or when I was an Aikido instructor, yoga instructor, it's so important to understand, you know, what people, like how people feel and what they think in order so you would know better, you know, how to, how to really make sure they engage. So yeah, body language, I, I was reading his body language and I could see that he was, he was, uh, what's the right word here? But, but he was um, kind of hurt in a way but also kind of like, basically, I would, if I would have to say what is happening in his mind, it's like, oh no, it's some kind of, I was rejected. And, and then he was just so upset, not in an angry way, but just kind of in a sad way. He's like, oh, they're not going to go with me. And if you're like, if you're a spiritual guy, person, woman, whatever, isn't spirituality all about becoming free? You know, kind of shedding off the chains of your limitations. And that guy devoted his whole life for in that kind of very cliche traditional spirituality lived in India whatever and you could see that he's so fragile it's so easy to hurt him you know like he he needed to boost his own ego by having us at this place that's my interpretation which I think is fair to think it, it's probably true and when we said no he felt kind of hurt it's like is that what spiritual people are do I want to be a spiritual people person then if, if it's like that? Do you see what I'm getting to? And that applies to, to a lot of spiritual teachers that I met. Like if you get to know them closer, there's like, it's not that great. So why would I want to do what they do? It's, it's a thing to think about. But yeah, but then the main message I really wanted to, to come across just coming back to spiritual teachers and spirituality is, but actually specifically spiritual teachers, they, the, the idea that they don't know shit. They don't. You know, most of them never went through some hardcore education of all the specific uh, things that they're talking about. Like, actually, again, I'll give you another example. As I said, I met a lot of spiritual teachers through my life, through that career, spiritual career I had. And there was this one uh, woman who, uh, who, who was kind of a cool lady in the day when I met her initially. But then she, at a certain point, she decided she's going to become a spiritual teacher. Actually, it's kind of even worse. She, she, she turned into spirit, spirituality, became interested in the esoterics. And then she's, you could see she's transforming, she's changing, becoming weirder and weirder. And soon enough, like, I don't know, like six months later, or let's say a year, she decided she's now a spiritual teacher. It's like, holy crap, right? Worst thing, she was giving lectures, online lectures about relationships. Again, relationships. Although I think, if I remember well, I'm pretty sure it's correct, she wasn't in a relationship herself at the moment. She went through a, a break breakup some time ago. She barely had like legit good experience with relationships and she was giving 
relationship online lessons. And the, 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 the terrible thing is that people are not smart enough, they don't have enough critical thinking to realize I shouldn't listen to her. You know, I sh this is not the person to believe in. And, and there's a smart person who's gonna look and say like, how does, who's she uh, to talk about relationships? Like, what is, what makes her opinion valuable? Doesn't. Smart person will see that and will not listen, but there's a whole group of people who are dying to listen to people like that and they feed each other. You know, then somebody says, oh, such a great advice. And that spiritual teacher is like, oh, it is a great advice. And then it's a vicious circle. You know, so it's it's fed from both directions. So we should be careful, you know, not to go there. And and that's that's something I wanted to, to mention as well is, I hope your brain is not frying right now, but anyway, I, I actually have like 10 minutes more on the GoPro, so it's as far as I can go. So I'm gonna think, I'll finish soon enough. But yeah, that's one more thing I wanted to mention about spirituality is that uh, being in that world for long enough, I've, uh, I've, I've started to recognize that most of the people that I met that turned into spirituality were usually people who were suffering. You know, they had some flaws in their lives where they, you know, they were either they had some traumatic experience or, or they were lost and confused and they would go to spirituality to seek for answers. And I think part of it is because it's an easy answer. You know, you don't need to put in a lot of work there. You just go to spiritual teacher and he says to you what's right and, and nobody pressure tests every, anything. Nobody, you know, questions anything. And then suddenly you're part of the pack and you say the same thing to others and everybody likes you. You know, it's not like real, real work where you have to, you know, of course, there may be exceptions, but I think the general direction is, from what I saw, is, you know, you just go about there, you say the right thing, you do the right thing, which everybody does and you're approved and, and, and suddenly have a lot of, yeah, you, you have a lot of pain torn, traumatized people, you know, teaching each other and believing that this is gonna help. It's kind of sad actually when you think about that. Yeah. Now, yes, I wanna mention that I don't think I was that bad. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying this, I guess I'm trying to make myself feel a bit better or not to seem too bad. I always try to be humble. I always spoke about only the things which I really believed in. But also too, again, I believed in the wrong things as well. Like my teacher, whom I completely believed in, said some, some good stuff, but a lot of that was also bullcrap. And I, I, because I believed in him, I trusted in him so much, I would go to others and would tell them the same thing. And then I would realize later on, like, shoot, it wasn't actually a very good advice. So I hope you're not doing the same. <laughs>